It's the commission. But when it looks like you're looking at the screen, where are you looking? Up there or at the screen, really? Radio show. Radio, 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 radio show. What's the commission? Radio show. Radio, 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 radio show. What's the commission? Radio show. Radio, 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 radio show. Somehow later. What's the commission? What's going on? Miss Polly Jam, the fashionista. Okay. You said I don't have time to and I'm Young Strip on there, man. Young Strip, nice. The Commission. Radio show. Radio, 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 radio show. What's the Commission? Tune in, tune in. I know you're going to take this. Commission Radio Show back again. You know what? You thought it was Saturday, but guess what? We are here on Tuesday in an abbreviated version. As you know, we normally are on the air between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock on Saturdays. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. How many shows have had? 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock on Saturdays. 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock on Saturdays. And 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock on the simulcast, which is on BPEN, Black Professional Entertainment Network. So I was correct. I was just incorrect on telling you how to reach us. You can also reach us on Facebook, which you're doing right now, and also on Twitter and Instagram, where you can follow me as edgrade1906. But enough of all of that. We are here today um, again because we just got out of line. Again, witnessing democracy on the march. Democracy on the march. It was a stunning display of democracy yesterday as we set a lot of records, it seems like, in making sure we got people out to the polls. And we want you to continue to go out to the polls. Tip O'Neill, the former Speaker of the House, once said that all politics is local. All politics is local and that is indeed the case. When we talk about politics, whether or not we're talking about Mr. Trump in the White House or Ted Cruz or Beto or Roy, well when it comes down to it, what affects us most is what happens down the street. What happens down the street, whether or not you're running for school board or whether or not you're running for uh, city council or whether or not you're trying to put a petition out, as they are doing now, uh, in Grand Prairie to have uh, legalized alcohol, uh, liquor that is, liquor stores. That's what they get ready to do. They get ready to vote on that. Put a petition for that. They're trying to compete with Arlington, obviously. <laughs> uh, obviously. And it's a moneymaker. In regards to Arlington, we have one of, the, one of the people in Arlington that is well known in the community. Her family's well known in the community. It's Miss Crystal James, who is the granddaughter of Mayor Elzio, former mayor of Arlington, Texas. A great man, I've known him for years. He helped me when I was running for office in Arlington, Texas. I bet you didn't know that, right? I ran for office in Arlington, Texas on the Arlington School Board. But that was years ago, years ago. But today, Right now, it's a, a, another campaign that's going on, and Crystal James is here to talk about term limits. There is a, a, a not a petition. We went past a petition. It's on the ballot. It's a proposition on the ballot. Proposition on the ballot. So they went through the whole process of getting a petition, got the right a number of people to uh, sign the petition, and from that point, it gets placed on the ballot. So now it's on the ballot as a proposition. So how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Moving and shaking in Arlington and looking for a few things to actually pass proposition-wise. Uh, JPS the, on, on Tarrant County side has an $800 million bond package. It's gonna provide needed improvements, uh, mental health hospital, new neighborhood clinics, and that's Tarrant County Proposition A. We want that to pass. And then City of Arlington has four other propositions, A, B, C, and D. And it's for streets and sidewalks, police and fire, infrastructure, and just basic maintenance. They do one about every four years. But this Proposition E is different. It is the work of one single citizen 
who did do the work and got 11,000 signatures, 11,000 certified signatures to get this on the ballot. And it's a term limit proposal. What's interesting about it, Ed, is that it's one of them, it is the most restrictive term limit ever proposed in the nation. Now, how so? In that it has two years, two terms that you can serve for life two three-year terms as city council person or mayor and after that you can run no more additionally it's retroactive so it goes and sweeps everyone with experience on the council currently and I have to get the names right it takes out first of all our only sitting African-American city council person Michael Glasby in May of 2019 along with Catherine Wildman and Lana Wolf and then takes out in May 20, uh, May 2020, uh, Sherry Capehart and Robert Shepard. But it's really not about people. It, 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 it's not about people. I think that's why some people are voting for it is because they're ready for what they term as career politicians to get on out. The, a lot of those people have served over 10 years and I believe together they've served 16 years on the council, some of them. So the people that are for this proposition uh, the person who authored it has a pretty deep political personal grudge, but it's on the ballot. Now, it's on the ballot now, and you, you mentioned quite a few people that, that it would take off. So it would basically revolutionize who was on the city council and just basically remove them. Who is this person that's, uh, that started the ballot, uh, the proposition? His name is Zach Maxwell, and he runs a newspaper, a digital newspaper actually, called The Arlington Voice. And I know him to be just quite contrary with a lot of grudges, and as actually a known racist that has a lot of issues with African Americans that protest and march, specifically the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, I, you, you gave me this here, and it says, this is something that says when Black Lives Matter thugs in Arlington are saying stupid, can't say that word. That's one of those <laughs> words you can't say on there. Like, do away with grand juries, it makes it kind of hard to believe there's much going on upstairs. It goes further on to say that if you turn off food stamps and unemployment, the people wouldn't have time to march because they'd have to go get a job. All these Black Lives Matter. And he is the author of the All Into Term Limits proposition. Either. He is. He is the author of it. Him and a, and a motley crew that have gotten it together. But it is legitimately on the ballot. And what he did tap into was a sentiment in Arlington with 11,000 voters that perhaps term limits is something that needs to be considered. This proposal, however, is far too restrictive. Well, being restrictive as it is, and you mentioned the fact about this individual being, uh, uh, you, you said he was racist. I don't know this guy. Right. But from what you, you just uh, gave me, it, it doesn't seem like I would be sending him one of my Christmas cards, mm -hmm. or for that matter, a Kwanzaa card either. But that being said, though, that the uh, term limits is also supported by, if I'm not mistaken again, the uh, Arlington NAACP. Absolutely. They, they jumped on the bandwagon as soon as it was brought to the city and uh, as soon as it became an issue. And they are absolutely in for it. And without putting words in their mouth, I believe the, the statement says that they believe it will create opportunity for new leadership, diverse leadership, and it gets rid of quote unquote career politicians. I don't want to make their point for them, but there's some legitimacy to considering term limits. Well, your grandfather ran for office, and uh, he ran for office in city council, legendary, uh, I may add, I, and I just want to say that. Anytime I speak of him, I, I put that there as well. Thank you. Uh, but when it, when it came to him running for office, he served his terms, and, and he, he left. He served 13 years. 13 years. But he not served at large, at large as city council. Then he, when we got single member districts, which we can talk about that and the promise of diversity that it brought. And you still got one. And we still just only have one, one African American. So it did not bring the diversity. That, that seems to be, that's the deal that you have on, on, on the city council in Arlington itself. And you only have one. Uh, how many do you have on, on the school board? One. One. Okay. 
That's what I thought. One, it seems to be the magic number. Because when I was running, I would have been two. And that's well, they why couldn't, I didn't get elected that, because right. I was, it would have been two. So that explains nothing has changed in Arlington politics since I attempted to be number two in 1996. But now as we progress to 2018, and we still have the one that's there, this uh, proposal would, would, would take away. It would create right. open seats. And the notion is that with open seats, you don't have the burden of an incumbent to overcome. And it should make it easier for a fresh, unknown member of known establishment to be elected. Well, it, it does not solve the problem of once you create that open seat, who's coming to vote? The issue is the low voter turnout and voter apathy in Arlington in May. 6,000 people can decide who becomes your next city council person. So the issue is once you create these open seats and you find a minority to run, someone that's credible that, that the NAACP may back, if you can't bring people out to vote, you still have a problem. Because from what I can see, the people that they term as the establishment are playing chess, not checkers. They've never been playing checkers. And where you may replace those names, they probably have their great-grandchildren ready to run for office and step in those seats. Now, when we're speaking of uh, this campaign, this proposition, shall I say, the proposition that currently exists, it's gotten a lot of support. It has. Uh, the Police and Firefighters Association. One of the police associations and one of the fire associations have definitely supported it. And you know, nationwide, I think people are looking at term limits as a, as a solution to the corruption and things that they see in big politics. You brought up a quote by Tip O'Neill that all politics is local. And one of the things that you and I know is that there really aren't local career politicians in Arlington because it's a volunteer position. There's no salary, there's no compensation, there's no driver and, and vehicle like Mayor Price has in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. There is simply an opportunity to serve. What I know watching my grandfather and other people that have served is truly it's a sacrifice of time, sacrifice of money, personal donations, and the idea that people just sit in office forever does but would bother me if that were the case. Well, it seems like they're sitting in office in very now. Except that they're up for re-election every two years. They're up for re-election. And, excuse me, I think it's three years. They're up for re-election. And they are term limited by the number of times that voters will keep re-electing them. So it seems to me the solution would be, if I were the NAACP, would be to get my numbers up to run a candidate that could win. Are you a member of the NAACP? I am not a member of the Arlington, Texas NAACP. Oh, then that explains why you and the NAACP are at odds. We are not at odds in that they're an organization and I'm an individual. We had, I had disagree with them on one issue, but I've moderated several of their campaign forums and I'm very supportive of their campaign really against the police department and this shooting with O'Shea Terry, I, I agree with a lot of the things the NAACP are doing. What I cannot get on board with, I think you know I went to Howard University, where black thought and black thought leadership is very diverse. There's a whole diaspora of opinions and we can disagree on one issue and still stay together. It seems with this chapter, if you disagree, you're automatically called paid and played a coon and Uncle Tom and being accused of being in the mayor's pocket. And I don't play those type of politics. I've always been an independent thinker. And one issue is nothing to fall out over. So you agree with them on a lot of issues, but just not this one? Right? Just not this one and not the tactic. Again, I think the energy should be put into registering voters and getting your own membership up. Well, I think the NAACP has about 83 members. Well, the politics aside, the NAACP aside, because this is endorsed by the Police and Fire Association. Police and Fire Associations are pretty well tied in with city establishment. 
generally what's happening right now i wasn't aware of the police endorsement but the firemen are totally at odds with their chief right now and so there's a pull between the chief of the fire chief and his rank and file. So the rank and file firefighters association, we have issues with staffing, of course, compensation, their pension are using, I don't know what, they are supporting Zach as a way to not support the leadership. They feel like the leadership's not supporting them. The campaign, how, the, I, I keep calling the campaign. It the, is. The, the, the proposition, it's on the ballot but it's way down at the bottom. It's the last thing you will do as a voter. And unfortunately, we got a few voters out of the booths yesterday that voted straight ticket and missed the propositions. So if you vote straight ticket, you need to scroll through your whole ballot in Tarrant, in every county. And I'm a proponent of not voting a straight ticket. Even if you vote for only one party, you should go and check each person's name to make sure that your vote has gone in in each race, but they have missed the propositions. So yes, Proposition E is the very last thing on the ballot. Which, well, I don't vote in Terry County, I vote in Dallas County. Which page is that on? I believe it's the fourth. Oh, you don't have like seven pages like I have in Terry County? I, I don't think it's there. seven. No, mine isn't seven, mine wasn't seven. So you have to go through four pages and then it's the last one. Right, and it's the last thing. Um, there's the Tarrant County Proposition, the JPS Vaughn, then there's four others, and then Proposition E. So now, uh, regarding this proposition and, and how it's progressing, are there any other people? Now, this is who is supported the uh, proposition. Well, who is supporting uh, keeping things the way they are? Well, first of all, Mayor LZ Odom is against Proposition E. He is not against term limits per se, but would like to see a more reasonable proposal that could include laying off for a term, like in Dallas where city council, you have to lay off for a term after three terms in office, then you can run again. He'd like to see a citizen committee come up with terms and a plan that may work. And the mayor and leadership has committed to a citizen committee not one individual with an ax to grind to bring forth this proposal. And they'll bring it forward in May. This changes the city charter. Now, Arlington, everyone in Arlington, I, the politics in Arlington. <laughs> it's, it's a strange bear. I was gonna say that, but it appears that when it comes to politics in Arlington, you have a lot of people who drive and push the envelope, such as with the red light camera, mm -hmm. and you got that thrown out, and now this. What draws people to Arlington to be, to be uh, uh, aggressive? I, I couldn't think of a better word than that. It's just very aggressive state of politics, and it's, it's, it's different. I think in and of itself, the idea of a single individual who pounded the pavement and got 11,000 signatures to support a notion and followed the process and follows the process to get something on the ballot is a good thing that we have a democracy that works, that can bring things to the issue and the forefront to be discussed. And I'm always in favor of anything that brings people aggressively or not to the political table. So many people say, I don't do politics. I don't vote. I don't get involved. It's too messy. So when people dig in and do the hard work, I respect that. So I'm glad that Arlington's a place that people challenge and that there are individual thinkers. I also hope that it's a place where we educate ourselves as voters and don't just jump on bandwagons. Because again, this is a strange pairing when you have someone who is against progressive Black Lives Matter movements, but yet has enjoined with the NAACP. I would think the proper word, I was, I was searching for that word, and then I, I looked at the internal ballot that was in my, my head, and libertarian. Mm -hmm. I believe that they're more, they're not Democrat, they're not Republican, 
more libertarian. I don't know that to be true in Arlington, but it could be. Conservative at some points, liberal in some aspects, and also from what I just saw here, that's absolutely uh, mm. the situation here. Uh, it, is, uh, it, it, it begs to say that they have received some allies. If you have someone who, who's anti-Black Lives Matter, but yet partners, if you will, uh, is that that their stance, their political stance, is also supported by the NAACP. That you guys got got a lot going on over there. I think it is. I think it's a complex issue. It's and, very complex. And with and it's more complex than African Americans who don't agree with this proposal are somehow not black enough. No, I never somehow, said that. Well, it's been asserted that somehow we are not for black people. We have sold out in some way. And I think that's unfortunate. Like I said, going to Howard University, where people think and and disagree. So they said that directly about you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The president herself. Somehow I'm a sellout, or I think it was a hoe being pimped. Okay. Well, I didn't quite expect to hear that. Today. <laughs> I didn't expect to hear it either, Ed. You just come on my show saying and just okay. tear it up. Like, I'm sorry. Now I understand Reverend McKissick, Dwight McKissick, who was involved. In Dwight McKissick from Cornerstone, along with Kennedy Jones from Greater Community, along with uh, Reverend Goines from Conania, along with several, uh, Renee Hornbuckle, are all against Proposition E, and there will be a mailer going out tomorrow, along with Mayor Odom on it and um, Councilman Glasby, that talks about waiting for a more reasonable plan that is not totally against term limits, but against this proposition. I find it interesting, and I know you are a member of the Grand Prairie NAACP, correct? Well, I'm a member of the Dallas NAACP. Dallas NAACP. I can't understand how a civil rights organization that when the Voting Rights Act was being considered in 1965 fought so hard for our right to vote where fire hoses were turned on us. Dogs were unleashed on us. We were threatened with our lives. Now I want to say here, we can't make it to the polls. Will you do our job for us and get rid of politicians we don't like? Do you think that's honestly what they're saying? And I'd also like to send a shout out to the Tri-East NAACP because I'm a member of that one as well. I don't want to exclude any membership of any NAACP members. And I see Jose Fain is uh, online as well. Good, good evening, shall I say. Uh, so back again to uh, what we were talking about, the NAACP, the proposition, I would love to have them to appear on this show as well to have a fair and balanced, oh, wait a minute, let me make it sound like I'm doing Fox. <laughs> so let's just do a commission. I think it's a meatier so discussion. I, the, I think the, the weightier discussion that I hope comes from this is how do you get people to the polls to vote there? There should be a lot of people voting there. I mean, with, with the they don't come out in May to get rid of it because the overwhelming sentiment but says it's on that the, it's on the ballot now. It's on the proposition on the ballot correct. now, so it'll pass. If it passes, they'll come out and vote. So and I'm just saying in May, but if it don't, if it passes, then we create open seats, and in theory, everyone's going to come out and elect this great new leadership. So that was the same thing back in, was it 11 years, 12 years ago, 11 years ago when single member districts was argued about. The argument was, and it was the NAACP and every other organization for diversity that was single member districts, you create opportunity for more representation by minorities. So there was an African American city council person on that council. They divided up the districts and where were they? Not a single more African American was brought to the council. Not a Hispanic brought to the council. Not an Asian American brought to the council. I fear that the energy put in removing people could be placed in bringing voters out because again, without that win number, you can clear out as many seats as you want and if the establishment, which is this Illuminati level type of coalition, according to some, if they're serious about maintaining control in Arlington, what makes you think they don't have 
six other lineups ready to go and circulate them through. We've got to be smarter and more strategic and more engaged in this process. Term limits passes. We have three open seats in May. Who's running? Where are the African Americans that are poised to run? Well, we've had an African American running for office. I believe he lost by how many votes? Well, he actually won the general election, I believe, by a few. Are you talking about Marvin yeah. Sutton? The question may be I think I may have asked the wrong question. Where are the African Americans to vote for him and support him? 6,000 folks, I think, I, and I would have to pull the numbers, but literally under 10,000 people decide elections in single member districts. My mother ran this past May in an open seat, mind you, and didn't get the votes. There were some tactical things as well. She announced a little late, but she was fully qualified. And getting people out to support, pulling teeth. If there are 60 plus thousand registered African-American voters in Ardington, if they don't come out now, I just don't understand how they're gonna come out all of a sudden in droves in May. Because removing people doesn't automatically put people in place. So when you create these vacancies, who's going to elect someone, new thought, you may be new names, who's gonna elect new thought? And, and that's where I would like to see the NAACP and other organizations, Greek letter organizations, churches, put the effort in engagement, voting, serving, volunteering, because then you have a pipeline, right? Now, speaking of Greek letter, and I'm gonna ask you this, the president of the NAACP. Yes. And don't y'all belong to the same sorority? Absolutely. We both belong to the same sorority, and we will continue to belong to the same sorority. And uh, she may want to fall out with me, but I'm not falling out with her over one issue. This is just one issue. So I'm just saying, with, in regards to uh, Greek letter organizations and, and in Grand Prairie, for example, in Grand Prairie, when I had uh, approached some city leaders in Grand Prairie regarding Greek letter organizations, they said they didn't understand the merit of it because they don't understand the fact that black Greek letter organizations, they do things when they leave, when they leave college campuses. Whereas yeah. other organizations, they, it's, 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 over. it's over with. It's over with. No, it's quite a bond. It's quite, and you know, it's quite a lifelong bond, sorority membership for African Americans. So it, 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 I don't take that lightly at all. However, I also believe that there's room for for all ideas and all thoughts, and we can still be unified. I would never accuse anyone who thinks differently than me, anyone who takes a position other than me. Uh, uh, I would never accuse them of somehow being a coon or played or in the mayor's pocket. They might just disagree and have a different thought. You got to ask the grand on that one, don't you? It really did bother me. I have to admit that, that um, coming from very lively, engaged communities, I've lived in Kansas City, I've lived in Atlanta, look at the mayor's race in Atlanta. Look at, look at, and coming from Arlington, where there are diverse opinions. And, and then again, coming from Howard University, I don't like those old school tricks of trying to pigeonhole people because they think differently. I would hope that we could discuss the issues. What are the merits of the proposition? Agree or disagree without labeling and name calling. It, it's juvenile. All right, early voting locations. Yes, South Services, they're currently open this week, eight to five, and there are seven, I believe, South Service Center, Tarrant County Sub Courthouse, the Junior League of Arlington, Bob Duncan Center, the Elsie Odom Athletic Center, and TCC Southeast. And you'll see a very lively group of poll greeters. It is packed and we are coming out to vote in record numbers. So if you make it to the bottom of the ballot, this is one to consider. This is definitely one to consider. Okay, then you, you said all of those and you didn't even look down at this at least one time. 
did. You did. But okay. I know him. You know him. Okay, so let me ask you this. I'll read this portion. Of the early okay. order information. Is this a quiz, Edgar? No, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a quiz. I'm going to ask you this. October 22nd, I'm going to give you the times. And the, this is what everyone should be listening to yes. as well. Uh, the times, uh, Monday through Friday, October 22nd through the 26th, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Saturday and Sunday, October 27th and 28th, uh, it's 7 to 7 on Saturday. On Sunday, it's 11 to 4. Remember, you got to go church, 11 to 4. And uh, October 29th through 31st, you ain't got to go, but that's the reason why they put it, put it there, to be honest with you. October 29th through 31st, uh, uh, Monday through Wednesday, it's 7 to 7. And if we close out November 1st and November 2nd, which is 7 to 7. Now, have you voted? No. I worked the polls yesterday, and it was an hour and a half wait. So I prayed that God would give me enough to wake up today and make it to vote. And I have not voted yet. So if you look up me in the Tarrant County Voter Database, I'm still unvoted. And it feels like being naked. I normally vote the first day. So you one of those persons who, who call up your friends and everything and say you haven't voted? No, I try. I do shame them on Facebook, but I don't call them up personally. You know, that's one of those things that, that my wife had did before she, she, when Obama was running for president, she got everyone to vote and everything. She looked up relatives and said, you haven't voted. Yeah, I voted. No, you didn't. Because you, cause it's public record. I mean, you can see who's voting and not, but I don't, I don't want to look. Because I will tell you, I remember being in high school one of, during one of my grandfather's elections, and we ran a couple directories and of, mem of things that we were members of to see who was even registered. And my heart broke that some people I was close to, so and, voted. no, it wasn't that they weren't voted. It was that they weren't registered. Because back well, then, the, techno yeah, the technology wasn't there in real time to see who had voted, but the technology was there to see whether or not they were registered when you pulled that voter registration list and I want to I want to go back to this not being a personal issue it's really about the merits of what's best for the city and I don't think term limits is off the table this proposal though seems to be quite restrictive and I hope that we hold if it, if, if we defeat it I hope we hold the Arlington leadership accountable for bringing back a sensible proposal because you can't ignore the sentiment that people in the city want yes. some sort of term limits. well they do and, I, I and that's real that being real as well uh, when you have people that have served on the city council uh, Reverend Glassby for example has been there since uh, a long time and before that on the school board a long right, time a long time and when you vote where are you going to vote Elzy Ah, uh, that was a trick question. See, now that's what I was going to ask you. Though. You know, it so has, how does it feel going going to vote, and then the person that say you got the same name of the building? Yeah, it really gives me great pause. Not only to vote there, but every time I go, to think how what a blessing it is that the citizens of Arlington think enough of my grandfather's service to name a building after him. Uh, I think that's absolutely amazing. And, you know, I would really hope that the Arlington chapter of the NAACP would take some leadership in bringing a proposal forward. That's the thing that I think the media has played upon is that somehow this is an NAACP-driven proposal. They had nothing to do with it. No, they didn't author it. They didn't beat the streets to get it passed. They didn't to get it on the ballot. They haven't done any. They, they, they've joined Zach's bandwagon to be a foot soldier for him. And it's too bad because it'd been a great issue for the Arlington NAACP to gather people, bring forward a sensible proposal, and pass it. That's leadership. That's leadership. And it would be a feather in their cap to bring forward something. I do respect the NAACP as a needed civil rights organization. And again, the Voting Rights Act, the voter suppression that the NAACP fights, making sure that voters are protected, making sure that voters can vote without being harassed. These are important things that they do. And it would seem that 
taking leadership in an issue like this would be natural. Yeah, we're, well, we're about to close right now. We'd like to go ahead and thank you for coming on the show again and give my regards to your grandfather. Like I said, legendary, we talked about uh, Mayor Elsie Odom being the first African-American uh, mayor in Arlington, Texas, and if I'm not mistaken, the first African-American city council member as well. He was. And Thank also uh, in Orange, Texas, if I'm not mistaken, as well. It, that is true. He was the first African American that you know that's to serve on a school board. Served in a school board, and that happened right after the 1965 Voting Rights Act. So he goes into the record books a lot in the state of Texas. Is when I say legendary, I say legendary. Then I went way back. I was you did. Now let me tell you, a morsel in 1967, I believe it was. My mother finished high school and as a member of the board of trustees my grandfather got to award my mother her high school diploma that'll so work. amazing work. amazing won't he do it you won't he do it and that's it all right vote no on proposition ed all right commiss radio show we will be back again this saturday this saturday the commiss radio show thank you for tuning in and listening in and don't forget to look on BPEN tomorrow, that's 30.8 on the DFW market area uh, of obviously the Ed Gray Shay. All right, we will see you guys later. Thank you again. I'm Pastor Freddie Haynes. I listen to Where's the commission on the fish.